Hey family, everyone. Um, good evening. Uh, this is Queenie. Uh, we are going to get started for today's Friday 36 session. session. Um, first of all, I need to share with you on today's agenda. Uh, for today's uh, Friday 36, uh, we are going to talk about uh, instrument development. Um, so for today, so we are going to look at the family environment the very visionary you guys are familiar with, you know, for the all three. Uh, uh, class. Also, we are going to look at the polite survey uh, for nurses and the vocation. Uh, so we will take a look at that and have a discussion. So if you have any question like uh, uh, if you want to uh, uh, develop uh, a vocation, please feel uh, free to ask. Uh, I just need to make a note. Uh, Marilyn uh, Lawrence, um, she is willing to share with us her survey questionnaire. Uh, she will present her survey questionnaire for uh, on the tomorrow Friday central session, you know, the Friday thirty six central session, but not today. So if we are, if you are willing to participate on tomorrow session, uh, please welcome to join us. You know, because I think that it will be very helpful if you are uh, more like a Maryland perspective. And also family can share with us about uh, how she developed her uh, if you are unable to participate uh, uh, for tomorrow's Friday presentation, you are always welcome to review the recorded um, presentation. Okay, uh, so that's for today's agenda. So, any questions? And uh, Beverly, do you have any announcement you'd like to uh, share with us? Go ahead, thank you. Thank you, family. So, any questions from any one of you um, about this week's reading material or your group project proposal? Okay, you guys are still thinking, so that's okay. And if you have any questions, please, uh, please ask, uh, you know, anytime. So, uh, you guys are very familiar with this table, I know. Um, so, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the questionnaire that part. Here. So, it depends on uh, what type of your study, you know, research process. Um, if your research topic, I'm going to move this a little bit, if your research question is level one, then most likely you have to Design a survey. I'm sorry, let me adjust a little bit so then we can get the. Okay, so uh, this your research question, the level one research question, then most likely you have to develop a interview, you know, qualitative study or an open question. Uh, if that is uh, your research question, the level two research question, then most likely. Uh, you are going to have a structured or quantitative data collection. How will you understand what this means? Uh, not in the situation piece in the why. So, in other words, is, uh, if you don't know the phenomenon very well, then most likely, for example, like a study is interested in the spiritual or religious care. So, if she is not very sure, um, um, how patients or families perceive, you know, the concept of spiritual care. Uh, she will want to conduct a, a qualitative study at each of them. If we already know that we only have some data to understanding about spiritual care or religious care, then we might be able to develop a questionnaire. You know, that would be a structure. And a questionnaire and ask the patient to respond to our question. You know, for example, you can have a Okay? okay? Um, so, just an overview. I'm going to uh, open the family involvement survey questionnaire. So, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please raise your hand and go ahead. And the family will be able to take care of that when I'm opening the, um, the file. Okay.
क्या है Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm your question is great. Um, um, and the family is responding to actually, right, I support her completely. Um, it is, um, it is important for you to understand that so we have to respect people's uh, uh, intellectual uh, property, like uh, the questionnaires people develop, or the articles. You know, people write, so you have to have a focus and teacher. Um, and then, and see, guys, I need to make a note. Um, we have a little bit difficult in hearing you. I'm not sure whether your colleagues have the same problem, so um, I'm not sure what the, the reason. So I just want to tell you that I have a little bit difficult in hearing you. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, and the uh, so now so we have the family involvement of the questionnaire in front of you. So what we are going to do is uh, I'm going to ask for your help to see what we can do to improve the this of the questionnaire. The council wise and um, you know you know, anything. So what can we do? So uh, you can talk and then uh, um, Stephanie and me can respond. But if I'm typing, most likely I have to lock my speaker phone. So when I'm locking my speaker phone, uh, my, my, you know, a speaker, most likely, um, our connection will be a little bit kind of broken sometimes. But anyway, so please bear with me. And, uh, uh if you have uh, some questions related to your own survey questionnaire, when we are discussing this survey questionnaire, or the core line survey questionnaire, um, it is okay, you are welcome to ask. And also, when we are looking at the survey questionnaire, I also like you to think about, uh, to ask yourself, what kinds of uh, variables we are looking at? Is it a continuous variable, or will this be a categorical variable? Um, if it is a continuous variable, do you want to give the participant a range? For example, the age. Do you want them to write down their age, like a four to one year old, or do you want to give them a range, like a uh, twenty-one to thirty, and uh, you know, thirty, thirty, uh, or thirty to forty, something like that, a range? So this 
these are the ideas issues we have to think about and to take into consideration when we are developing the situation. So how about that? Um, uh, that takes you the questionnaire and then you can address any item you want. But I think that uh, it will be very helpful for us to look at uh, um, this questionnaire in this item first. Because so I think that we discussed this uh, item before. So uh, will any one of you are willing to tell me to divide um, question item 12? And when you respond, please tell me that if you are me, how will you revise that to make this item you know, more clear? Would that be okay? My new volunteer, please. Anyone that's willing to? Go ahead, Jerry. Jerry, can you tell me a little bit of what kind of range you like to have? Sounds right, sounds good. Jerry? Okay, thank you, Jerry, for your help. Catherine, is that right? Am I right? Go ahead and then tell me that, you know, what do you think? Well, I would actually disagree with Jerry. I would think that it would be better if they actually write in the number because that way it's a continuous variable. And you can always collapse the continuous variable into categories, but if they're already in categories, it's much more difficult. And also, I think the wording of this question, it should be the number of family members in your household under 21 years. So, Catherine, so how about now? Do you like, you know, the, the, the current wording now or any suggestion? Number of family members in your household under 25 years. Yeah, I like how that yeah, sounds better. I think that that's more clear. Okay, so Catherine, should I keep current or or should I take this out? Any suggestions? Um, I think that it's okay, but maybe it'd be more clear if you put number of family members currently in your household instead of at the end. Okay, sounds good. So, how about now? So, June, do you like to give us some suggestions? This is June, right? Well, <clears throat> Yeah, it's me. I'm, I'm here tonight. Um, well, the thing is, is that the way you originally had it worded, it sounded to me like you were asking how many households lived in your family. And so I'm not exactly sure what it is you want answered because in, like, in America, usually each home or family has one household. If you want to think of a household as parents, and children that are related. But if you look in another country, say maybe um, Mexico or um, somewhere else that's not quite the capitalist society we are, you may have six or seven households in your fa in your family. You may, under your roof, there may be six different heads of households. So what is it exactly you want answered, I guess, is my question. So, June, how about that? I like your response. It's a, it's a great suggestion. So, June, if you are going to ask, you know, a question like this, you know, related to family involvement, like, a, you know, 
uh, you want to know that uh, how many people, you know, human bodies are available to provide care, you know, if it's needed. How would you word this uh, item, this question? Can you give us some suggestion? And then, you know, I understand there is some cultural difference. So if you are me, uh, uh, what would you do? June? Um, well, if you, if you want to know how many adults are over age 21 are available to be caregivers, number 13 answers that question. So in number 12, possibly if you want to know, like Kate said, I mean, I think it's really good what Kate said, number of family members in your household under 21. I think that, that separates out adults and children, and I, I think Kate done, did great. I was just wanted to refer back to the original question. So June, you think that the, uh, you know, the revised questions now look better. So do you like, uh, by like a scale, or do you like the, uh, the participant to write down the number? Would you be able to respond to this as well? I like the number, because okay. I think there's a greater, greater room for error if you're selecting a range. Like, um, two to four kids, I have four kids, what if I accidentally hit five kids? Now it looks like I might have five to seven, and I didn't mean to check that, but if you actually fill in the number yourself, I think you have less room for error. Well, thank you. And also, if we do, like, you know, actually Jerry's suggestion is also very good in some situations, because some people like to do the checkbox. But here, one to two. So how about if somebody have a two family members in his or her household? You know, should this person mark this option or this option? Lashanda, you like to respond? Or Cindy, I'm sorry, Lashanda, go ahead. Can Can you guys hear me? Yes, we hear you, Lashanda. Okay, I'm going to make sure. I had to use the microphone. Um, I was going to say, one, uh, that's how working is. It's one to two or two to four. So, if I have, like, I don't know what to do. So, if you're going to do a range, one to two, and then three to four, Five to seven, et cetera, to the time to make And my other comment was, um, this is like if you're going to raise it up to the also range like patient A, because I might have lots of something, not patient A, but survey is fine with it. So I have something to do to the to the maybe you can have a problem, and maybe you can raise the A. So, Lashanda, would you give us some suggestions on uh, what kind of age range you think will be kind of appropriate for your participants or future participants? Yes. Okay, Lashanda, um, a good response. Well, you know, we can hear from uh, your colleagues as well. Okay, Cindy, go ahead. Cindy, 
Cindy, we cannot hear you. Sorry. Well, somebody was... Somebody, would you be able to, to send a text message to Cindy if that is possible? I'm not sure what's going on, but anyway, uh, okay. So, um, so here, let's look at the uh, participant's age. So, uh, Lashanta, you know, gave us a good suggestion about, uh, uh, about this item. So, so Lashanta said that maybe it would be more appropriate for the, uh, for us to, to give the participant the range of their age instead of asking to write the age. But I'm going to say that on the speaker. You know, uh, pay attention. Actually, for page, the participant's age and the household, I think that you can see both at the same time. The number of family members actually is the one, two, three, but there's no 1.5 family members. If I'm not clear, please raise your hand. But for age, we have a number between one and the two. For example, somebody's age can be 21 years and three months. So, in other words, the nature of these two variables actually is uh, a little bit different. You know, the nature, the characteristic of these two variables or two, these two items. So, if I am as a researcher, I will think about how can I get the, the scale. So you might need to do 28 to less than 21 years. So I'm sorry, you know, I, I don't have enough space so that I do that. And then we do 21 to less than 25. I hope it makes sense to you. Sometimes I make a mistake, so you have to remind And then you will do 25 to less than 40, then do 40, so let me check, 1, 2, 1, 40, then the 2, I hope it makes sense, uh, so, okay, Lashan, does you like to respond, go ahead. Okay, so um, so that's the thing to Alexandra. For family member, there's only one, two, three. So you do one, two, three, four, five, seven. Actually, it's very easy for someone to pick. But if someone just has their 21 birthday, you know, I'm going to write that again. Okay, 20, 18 to 21, uh, 22, I'm sorry, I, you know, 22 to to uh, 25. So if I do this, like uh, 18 to 21, 22 to 25, 25 to 40, then if somebody is just have their 21st first, uh, birthday, and uh, you know, you know, they might wonder which box they need to check. June, go ahead. Um, just going back to number nine, I was thinking that 18 to less than 21, then it should be 21 to less than 25, and then 25 to less than 40. Do you have the wrong symbols in there, or? So, Jim, please to clarify, you think that the week I should do, uh, we should do 18 to 21 and then 21 to 25? Or we should do 22 to 25 and the 26 to 40. This one looks better. Oh yeah, that one's fine. It was the one above that that's in red. If you were going to use that one, then your greater sign should be changed to left then, shouldn't they? Well, thank you very much. So, so 
Um, the 18 to less than 21 and the 21 to less than 25. Sounds right? But that's a great, no, that's a greater than sign, is it not? Does not the less than sign, um, the V goes, or am I wrong? Um, I just think you had the wrong mathematical sign. Sorry. Okay. Somebody who knows math. Well, thank you, Jim. Sorry, I'm not listening and just doing the typing, so you have to forgive me sometimes. I'm kind of like a, you know, uh, you know. How about now? Look a little better now? Okay, thank you very much, Jim. Okay, Jerry, go ahead. Jerry, it's just your point is very well taken. So, would you suggest to have a different kind of range? Would you tell me what you think? How about that to do 2018 to... Can you tell me what you think is a, would be would work a little bit better from your point of view? Okay, so are you saying that it should have the same range? So we will do 21 to 25, maybe, okay, 21 to less than 25, sorry, and uh, 25 to less than 30. Jerry, do you like this a little bit better? 18 to 21, 21 to 20, less than 25, 25 to 30. What do you think? Jerry? Jerry, are you there? So what's your suggestion? What's your suggestion? How about that, Jerry? You're thinking. How about that to take a Lashanda suggestion? And how about that to take a Lashanda uh, suggestion first, and then we can come back to you. Lashanda, go ahead. Okay, Lashanda, would you be able to repeat? You say that, um, can you just repeat what you said again? I'm sorry. I missed uh, some part, so. Okay, and this is a great question. So, you know, Mashanda, you have to ask yourself. If we are going to do 
every five years like this. Then, guess what? Uh, how many options we are going to develop? So maybe because we have or Okay, I should mention that your question is great. I cannot answer the question. It really depends on the purpose of your study. For example, if you want to know they are in their you know, for example, they are over 65, or they are between 55 to 55, and or 55 or younger. So it really depends on your research question. If you really want to know their exact age, maybe you should go with the original one. Maybe it's easier. So it really depends on the question. Do you think that the age play is important more? Um, so, you know, this is the question you have to think about. So, um, we don't have a lot of time. Um, so, I need your suggestion. So, do we, do we want to work on this survey questionnaire or do you also want to look at the, the whole life survey questionnaire? If you can ask, uh, we can focus on this patient involvement survey. Uh, yes, then can you? Would you show me the this sign so I know uh, what's your interest? So, so let me know that whether you want to focus on this one because we only have a time to five minutes left. Can you show me uh, if you think that the we you want to take with the co-life survey? I see one of them. Please uh, do the app. Would that be okay? So please show me this one or this one. So I know that the how can I put Thank you. Okay, so it seems like you like to see my revised uh, coli data. So um, I'm going to close this out and then open the, another survey questionnaire. Um, I'm not going to pull the, the survey questionnaire I sent you. Uh, so, um, you know, if you are able to open that file um, in front of your computer, that would be great. So, if you have any questions, I will please tell me answer uh, the question. Okay. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, I can hear you. There's a little bit of status that I can hear you. Thank you. Okay, I'm back. So, uh, here I am. Uh, this is the revised survey questionnaire. Um, uh, some of your colleagues offer their um, uh, uh, suggestions, and also uh, there are three uh, managers, you know, clinical managers, offer their suggestions. So um, I'm going to just kind of show you quickly what kind of uh, change has been made. But anyway, so uh, let's just go over this, and if you have any questions, or ask. So uh, here, you know that the you know patient and you know, participant gender, uh, this is straightforward. Um, because of this one, the very first one is a nurse survey. So I kind of put this in the other sort of kind of uh, you know a kind of new closet. You know, let me show you. Actually, this is the nurse survey. Because I expect that the most nurses have a reasonable, good vision, okay? So this is the nurse's survey. This is the patient's survey. Do you notice any difference between the nurse's survey and the patient's survey? Yeah, great. So tell me a little bit. Okay, this is, I'm sorry, this is a... 
Chris, do you like to share with you us about your observations? You know, the difference between the nurse survey and the patient survey. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm glad to join the group having technical difficulties. Um, well, the difference, I, you definitely notice that the patient family um, survey is spaced out. Um, it's a little uh, simpler, uh, easier to read, and not as many responses to, to choose from. There's the nurse one, it's a lot of uh, information, compact, in, in, you know, in a small space with many, many, um, you know, choices. But like you said, it's, you know, nurses, we, we kind of, you know what the baseline um, education is, is for a nurse. Whereas we don't know what the you know patient or family education level is, so you need to make that one uh, simpler. And the nurse one, you can make a little bit uh, more um, advanced, I guess. Okay, Chris, your response and observations are great. So here, my question is: If you are the nurse, would you be willing to fill out this survey question? You as a nurse, okay? Now, you as a nurse, would you be willing to fill out this nurse survey, two pages survey? Okay? Okay, I only see two, okay. So, why you are willing to respond? What kind of a speech do you pay? Go ahead, Chris. So, um, anything, uh, to, to help um, patient care and patient satisfaction and nurse satisfaction um, is helpful. So whenever I get surveys, I, 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 I make sure that I fill them out. Um, that's how we can make things better. And um, it would be interesting reading the responses or, or seeing the uh, compared responses like on the time frame of uh, when the, the nurse, how quickly she answered it compared to what the patient uh, perceived as the time that the, how long it took the nurse to answer the call. I, I thought that would be a very interesting, um, you know, from, from working on the clinical floor and seeing patients, you know, say, I know darn well, I mean, I should say, I as a nurse know darn well that, you know, that light went off maybe three minutes ago, but I was in another room and I got to them you know, as quick as I can. Oh, and then they say, I, I put my call light on 10 minutes ago. So it'd be interesting to see the, the, the difference of those two. Uh, I'd like to take uh, the Shanda Castillo um, response to her before I make any comments. Go ahead, Shanda. Was there a question? I have a question. The question is why, as a nurse, would I have to survey out? What kind of issues? Which you know, uh, you know, what kind of consideration? Well, you know, what kind of factors which will make a difference on your decision? And uh, then you check who is with Joyce. So, Lashanda, do you like to respond first and then Joyce? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say uh, consideration to a lot of nurses who are not surveyed um, will be the length. I think this is a good length for a nurse who's already sometimes has to test the time. In addition to those like Chris who, you know, want to know the research answers, you know, want to know how patients feel with care and content, I think the fact that only two pages so or you know, it's not extremely late for her to put on. Thank you, Lashanda. Good response. Okay, I'm going to take a joint response. Go ahead, Joyce. It's interesting. I had a question at the first part of it. It addresses it to a nurse, and yet in question three, it asks about your highest completed education program. Most nurses, in my experience, have more than a high school diploma. They have a, a degree beyond that. So are you looking for registered nurses, or are you looking for a nurse in the sense that it's a patient caregiver? You know, George, I love your question, okay? So here is the issue. So because I like to have the uh, nursing, the nurse technician, uh, or unit clerk 
to answer the survey questionnaire. As you know that uh, some hospitals, they have a uh, uh, call-out control. You know, there's a stage, you know, that kind of box uh, in the nurse's station. And then uh, in some hospitals on units, a uh, unit first uh, uh, might enter the, uh, the call light first. Then they call the nurse if it needs it. Mm. So that is my concern. Also, um, I take the nursing education out, nursing program out. So I put the your high computer education program. Uh, so regardless that it's a nursing, you get it or not. Okay, Cindy, go ahead. Joyce, go ahead. Hi. Joyce is first. Just, can you scroll up because I can't see the top of the, the questionnaire. Where it greets you and says, you talk, up where it says nurse colleague, that's the piece where I kind of couldn't reconcile the two. So I guess I just delete nurse and put colleague. Yes, so I suppose you can understand that now very well. So it is kind of difficult to develop a survey questionnaire. A lot of times we need a couple of pairs of eyes to help us spot, you know, the arrows or, you know, the, the confusing part. So maybe I should change this to college. Yeah, it will make better sense. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, Cindy, go ahead. You know what you say, you kind of just stressed what I was going to say, and that is that either should be nurse or um, healthcare professional colleague, but you just couldn't put both. And as, a, and as to the question of high school or diploma, there are such things as diploma nurses, but I agree with you. So you can pretty much just very good. Very much now you know that how good you guys are, right? So um, you know you should not underestimate your uh, your ability. Also, um, I think like it's very important for you to to understand. It is kind of important for you to have some effort to look at your uh, your survey questionnaire. Uh, these people can be the manager. Or nurses. I'm going to tell you why I ask you guys to, to provide your perspective, you know, the feedback or comments on this survey question. Because you can be the person who answer the survey. If you don't understand what I mean, then it means that uh, most of the nursing colleagues or healthcare colleagues will not be able to understand. So when you are designing a questionnaire, um, because you design it. A lot of times, it makes sense to you completely, but it doesn't make sense to the other. So, now you understand how valuable you guys are uh, situation are. So, hopefully it's gonna help all of you. Uh, also, I'd like to make a point. Uh, uh, some of your colleagues suggest that uh, we can, I forgot which one, for example, like a big question, how many years have you been working uh, in a few inpatient care units? And we have a couple of continuous variables like this. Uh, some of your colleagues thought that uh, maybe it would be very helpful if we give them a range, like an age. You know, we were talking about the family involvement survey. Give them a range, like a less than year, and year to three years, to three to five years, something like that. However, if I do that, I run into a problem. Guess what? What kind of problem am I running into? Anyone can, can you tell me what kind of problem am I running into? Okay, Chris, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to give it a shot. I think it would change it then if you're giving a specific range from continuous to, um, Oh, a different uh, level of measurement. The uh, um, ratio, was it ratio or, or interval? Um, if you're, you're going to put specific, you know, box one is uh, less than a year, box two is one to five years, box three is five to nine years, or something like that. 
actually give that my idea, but you did just say the turn. Okay, I'm going to refresh what Chris said. So, for example, you know, like this is the patient survey questionnaire. This one is the patient one. Okay, this is the patient one. So I'm going to scroll down. So this is for the patient because for patient it may be easier for them to check the box. Okay, you, you guys kind of agree, right? However, if you look at this question, so if I just ask the patient tell me how long is minutes or seconds, most likely I can squeeze that here. So it will only take one line. But now, because I asked them to check the box, so guess what? How many lines I'm using? Three. Make sense? So, uh, I'm trying my best to keep the survey questionnaire for nurse and for patients within two pages. When I say two pages, it's a, a double-sided. So, I have a lot of things I need to consider. And also, I don't want to make the nurse survey too, uh, no, the patient survey too crowded. So, um, so you see now I'm a, I barely have additional space um, uh, to put anything, and also it's very important for us to have some some space, you know, between the items. Otherwise, you know, you know, the patients will get or family will get very exhausted, and they might say, "Oh, you know, too many questions. I don't want to answer." So, in other words, is the most of people their eyes are looking for the open space, like this. You know, the space. I'm going to show you this again. So when you are designing a survey questionnaire, um, I'm going to show you the patient's one. So actually, oh, actually I can take this space out. So then I will have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I do that, take this space out, most likely I can ask another question. But would you like that better? So I'm going to show you if I take that out. And then tell me that what you think. Sorry, I'm I have to do some adjustment in order for you to see. So now you can see that. So now I don't have the space between that. So would you prefer me to take that space out or leave that? Okay, I'm going to take a choice. Is that your choice? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Joyce, go ahead. You know, I looked at it. I actually printed it out so I could take a look at it. And you are, it's very clear that when there's white space between it, the question stands out much more clearly. And when you remove that white space between questions, at least to me, it gets a little bit more confusing. That's a choice to use as a point. Actually, it's why it's so difficult to develop a survey questionnaire. It's because you have to, to design a survey questionnaire from the point, from the participants point of view. So, your point is very well taken. Thank you very much. Any question about this? We are kind of running out of time. So, any questions? Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, so, um, that's pretty much it. Of course, we can address every single item. Uh, so, I'm going to repeat the part that I, I, we, we just discussed. So, when you're designing a survey questionnaire, it's important for you to get someone to, to look at your survey questionnaire. You know, these people can be experts like a faculty manager, executive, or someone they are going to uh, respond to the survey questionnaire. You might want to prepare the survey questionnaire. When I say prepare, so you already know, you know, they know what's in our tendency. And uh, as you guys to participate. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Joyce, go ahead. I'm going to take your question first. Go ahead. Just a quick question. If you have someone pre-test your survey, do you list them as a resource in your references and do you refer to them in the body of your paper? 
Okay. Uh, this is a very good question. So how about that, Joyce? If you are going to publish your results in a journal article, what will you do? Will you include them as, you know, you have to hear me, you know, I'm going to speak slowly. Include this as first, or the, the people that prepare to submit the questionnaire as co-authors, or are you going to acknowledge them in the acknowledgement, or are you going to include their name in your article, or do nothing? Joyce? I guess I would either acknowledge them in the body of the article, or I would um, use them as a resource, but I would never think about leaving them out. I'm just uncertain which is the best choice. Oh, um, I, I can only tell you what I think. This is back on the different way of doing Sometimes we ask the six or seven or eight um, experts to review our certification. Most time we will pay them some money to appreciate their time. And uh, for the prepare, you know, the people or subjects they participate in the prepare, um, you can give them a token to appreciate their time. We don't include their name in our article. But if somebody, a faculty, they spend a lot of time helping you revise your article before you submit to a journal, then you might want to include this person's name in your acknowledgement. Make sense? So in other words, Yeah, thank you. I'm going to share with you uh, one thing that's kind of critical. We don't usually um, acknowledge someone, you know, you know, for example, the hospital or the administrator, the officer. Why? I'm going to tell you, for example, uh, the hospital administrator might not want you to tell the audience, you know, the readers of your article, uh, where, where, you know, you conduct your study. For example, you collect some data as the, um, and the Detroit VA has a base of one or two, so then people know that you can conduct that, you know, regarding the results of those of that, okay? So if you acknowledge the chief nurse of Detroit VA in your acknowledgement, it's just like you tell everybody who conducted that study in that very hospital. So if you are going to include the chief nurse or digital DA in your acknowledgement, you have to write to this chief nurse and ask for her permission to include her name or their name or his name in your acknowledgement. And, uh, you know, we don't usually include someone's name in our article, the body of the article. So you have to be very careful. You know, don't take everything for granted. Um, so some journal article will ask you to provide a letter or email saying that, that they are ready to to have their name included in your account. I hope I'm making myself clear. Um, any question about this matter? Thank you, Joyce. Any questions? Okay. Um. So now all of you and you know, you know, say something. But anyway, so. Um, but thank you for your participation uh, in the contribution to this session. So I will see you guys a little bit later uh, on this all three session. Thank you.